Okay, so we all know the components that make up our universe and everything in it. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons, which form into molecules. These protons and neutrons are made up of quarks, which give the particles their charge. Protons contain two up quarks and one down quark, while neutrons contain two down quarks and one up quark. But is this it? Is everything in the universe made up of these particles? As it turns out, no, it isn't. It turns out that there are more components to the universe than we thought. In addition to these subatomic particles, we have something called antimatter. Basically, antimatter is, in essence, the opposite of matter. Each particle that we know has its own antiparticle, so therefore, the antiparticle of a proton is an antiproton, the antiparticle of a neutron is an antineutron, and the antiparticle of an electron is an antielectron or positron. Similarly to how particles are made up of quarks, antiparticles are made up of antiquarks. Antiparticles have the same mass as their particle correspondents, but have the opposite charge and spin. This may seem confusing, but in reality, it's quite simple. Say we have a sheet of metal which represents energy, and we cut out a circular portion of the sheet to make a coin. This coin represents a particle of matter, since matter is just concentrated energy. When we create the coin, we are left with two things, the coin and the anti-coin which is represented by the space where the coin used to be in the sheet. This demonstrates that matter and antimatter are dependent upon one another. You can't have one without the other, just as you can't have the coin without the anti-coin. When the coin is placed back into the sheet, there is no longer any discernible coin or anti-coin, just the sheet, or energy. The same is true with particles and their antiparticle counterparts. When the two collide, both cease to exist and release energy and gamma rays. So if the two meet and cancel out, how are we and the rest of the observable universe still here and not being cancelled out by antimatter-matter annihilation? Scientists hypothesize that at the very beginning of the universe, during the Big Bang, there was an equal amount of matter and antimatter. Trillions upon trillions of particles and antiparticles collided, releasing a massive amount of energy. Scientists at CERN's Large Hadron Collider can actually create and observe the effects of antimatter by accelerating particles to light speed and then smashing them together. The resulting reaction mimics the conditions present immediately after the Big Bang on a small scale, creating elusive antiparticles which collide with their subsequent particles within a few billionths of a second to release energy, which can create temperatures up to 10 trillion Kelvin. However, at some point during the Big Bang, some one billionth of a second after the initial expansion, an imbalance was created, an imbalance which favored matter over antimatter. The cause of this imbalance is mostly unknown to scientists, but it is this anomaly that has allowed for matter to form into planets, stars, galaxies, even you and me. Our very existence is the result of a strange imbalance of an ancient war between matter and antimatter.